Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Good morning, everybody. <coughs> good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? God bless you all. God bless you for listening. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are, just begin to worship the Lord. Just thank Him for making it possible for you to be able to get this far. Some of you did not think you could do this. Some of you did not even think of joining. You just say, let you start and see how far you can go. And you are already on day three with us. Just thank Him for the strength to do this. Thank Him for helping you. Thank Him for everything. Just worship Him. Pray in the Holy Ghost. For those that speak in tongues, those that, those that don't speak in tongues, pray in English. Rase bre kashkandia kapori ende kashkandia ndaya kunda ya baba shundi ya katayari ya rekara ra baba shundi ya ira ra ra baba 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 dororo boshki ende ne 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 boshi ya hibre ne ne boshi katayara ra ra bosh hibra ra ba ri kushko thora ni bara ne 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 boshi ya hinde ne ba na ra baba sente ra ne 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 boshi. Hiradashko toro no no bosaria haskia ha. Hironda ya brashie kadia ha. Hireta ya brania kasko nelarie he kandia brania ha. Hirando bre kasko dila gadara skete na 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 basko dia ha. I love you Jesus. Ora skinda ya bre kasko dia ha. Hirese te na babaskia ha. Hirana Bashko Toro Bansi Kelly Gadosia. I love you, Jesus. Kandaya Kandaya Baba. Kosko Radia Hashkedia. I worship you, Jesus. Hikali Gadaya Baba Sia Akadio Kunda Meriende. has great plans for all of you and God is so pleased with you for doing this with us I've been worshiping and praying I've been feeling the presence of God and God has been showing me things and I'm just reflecting and just thinking of where he brought me from <sighs> I don't even have any strength. I'm so tired, but I just can't praise it. I can't, I can't stop praising him. I can't stop thinking him for my life. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Thanksgiving mood. Uh, I've not been able to sleep since uh, since the twelve o'clock prayer line. I've been up just meditating and spending time with God and just reflecting. You know, sometimes you have to go back and think of where He brought you from, and you just start seeing all the good things that He's done for you. <laughs> to skip this prayer line because I've been crying since I don't know if I'm ready for this one I'm so weak but I just can't stop crying thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus everybody just say thank you Jesus just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm supposed to be resting after that long trip from Liberia. But the moment I came into the house, I went into the bathroom to get ready. God told me to do this three days fast. And honestly, I'm just so tired. This is one fast that I've been so weak. I've been sleeping a lot. I've not even been able to leave the house. I'm just trying to be obedient to do this. Even now as I'm praying, I don't know if you can tell from my voice, I'm so, I'm so weak. But I just keep going. And then I'm just thinking of all he's done for me. I'm thinking of my life just a few years ago. And thinking of now, it's just a lot of difference, a big change. Like a big change, a big change. It's like, wow, it's just like that. I don't even know how it just blew up like that. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> just give me a few minutes, please. I hope you guys can hear me because my voice is... It's deep now. My nose is blocked and <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Good dear, good good dear.
just here meditating and praying and suddenly I, I was taken to my Instagram page right and I saw one um, a guy that was like is still like uh, one of the top um, leaders and top leaders in the business that I used to do before I I repented right in the business that I used to do before I repented, the one I told you guys I used to do from the house, where we recruit people, where I traveled, I've gone to Mexico, to Cayman Islands, I've been to uh, Bahamas through that business, I told you guys about it, that when I started, God did not want me to do that business anymore, so when I went on Instagram, I saw this guy, the director or big guy in the company, right? He posted something, and when I saw what he posted, because I still have, I'm still following a bunch of people I used to follow on Instagram when I was in the world. I haven't had time to unfollow anyone or anything. So when I went to his uh, Instagram page, I saw another guy that used to make a lot of money, right, in the company, because I used to know those top guys, you know. I always wanted to be as good as you know they were like I was always hard working and I used to struggle a lot in that business you know I was very good I was very good like people always saw me on the top list but I was struggling and they didn't even know so when I clicked on this guy's name his name is Josh something right I clicked on his name and it's it's it I just heard I heard it clearly like I heard it clearly. I heard that um <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I heard that he was struggling. I heard it clearly. I heard he's struggling now. Like then he was making money in the business. He was like the top guy, one of the top people, right? This is like multi-level marketing. If you if you if you're in part of this bit kind of business, you know what I mean. But now I heard, as I just clicked on his page, I just heard he's struggling now. And then when I look at his page, you could just tell. He even looks different, you know. He doesn't look the way he used to look. And I was like, wow, it's just been three years or so since I stopped, like, paying attention to that business. Because when I started speaking in tongues, I couldn't do the business anymore. Anytime I wanted to talk about it, the Spirit of God would tell me that's enough. You can't be doing that. You work for me now. So within three years and now, and I'm hearing that he's struggling. This guy used to make like like $200,000 a month or something. Big, big, you know, those big, big checks. And I go on his page and I'm hearing that he's struggling. And I'm going through his um, pictures and he's not really like the way that he was three years ago when I was still like interested in the business. And then I just started thinking of how I used to struggle so much doing that stuff. Like, my mother is on here, so she knows. I used to do, like, seven presentations a day, six presentations a day. I joined almost 1,000 groups on Facebook, marketing business groups to be posting advertisement for the business. Sometimes I would use me and Michael's picture. Um, I don't know if it's still online somewhere. I will post and say I'm a single mom and I make money from home. Contact me if you would like to know how to make money. Like I will sit all day and I'll be posting into these groups. I'll be chatting with people. I'll be doing presentations every day. I was working so hard. But it was not easy. I was not really getting anywhere with it. 
But now look at me. God has changed my life. I'm working for God now. And I'm not even struggling. I actually enjoy doing what I'm doing. And I'm going back and looking at those people that used to be the top guys. And now I'm hearing that they're struggling. And I'm not even struggling. I'm just here very comfortable, just happy. I'm, I'm being celebrated. People are, 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 are just loving me. And I'm not even stressing. God is leading me, taking me to different countries. And... <laughs> <laughs> and before I would be here all night, before I would just be here all night working and there was nothing to show for it, I would just be doing so much and so much. Even my mother, one time, my mother got tired. She's like, Every time you're talking about this business, don't you have something else to talk about? The thing took over me. I was always talking about it, and yet I had nothing to show for it. Like I was wasting my time. I was just wasting my time doing it. And look at what God did. Look at what God did in just three years. Look at how he changed my life. And God started giving me a scripture. Matthew 4 verse 19. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So while I was busy fishing for people to do this business and all that, Jesus Christ was telling me to follow him and he will make me fishers of men. And I read that in several translations. I read in several translations and I got to the, the Passion Translation, TPT Translation. It says, Jesus called out to them and said, come and follow me and I will transform you into into men who catch people for God. He said, come and follow me and I will transform you into men who catch people for God. So all this while I was catching people for this business that I was not going anywhere. I couldn't get promoted. I was stuck in one place even when I put in so much work. And Jesus Christ told me to follow him. And he will transform me into somebody that is going to catch people for God. And I obeyed and I followed him. And look at my life now. Look at how it's paying me. Look at how well it's going for me. And I'm just here thinking. I'm like, how come I didn't get to follow you sooner than this? I shouldn't have wasted my time doing all these nonsense. I should have followed you a long time ago. Because look at look at my life in three years. Just three years. Look at look at this. I've been to so many places. I've done so many things. So many people have been saved. But all the other time, I don't have anything to show for it. So I was just here sitting down and just appreciating God. Even with Peter, when he, was, when, when he came to use Peter's boat. If you remember that story, Peter could not catch any fish all night. It was, they went all night trying to catch a fish. They couldn't catch one. And when Jesus Christ used his boat and everything and helped him and he cashed, he, he caught a lot of fish. Peter told him, Jesus told Peter to follow him. And he left everything and followed him. And look at how he transformed Peter's life. What if Peter had refused to follow Jesus? What if he said, no, I want to just be a fisherman. I'm comfortable with fishing. I've been doing fishing all my life. I just want to stay here doing fishing. I don't need to follow you. Your work seems too hard. I don't have time to be going all over the place, talking to people that don't even care about me. Let me just stay here with my boat and my, and my net and just be fishing all day. What if he had said that? Would we even be reading about G uh, Peter? Would Peter be healing people and doing all these wonderful things for God? No. Oh. So there's somebody here that Jesus wants to make you fishers of men. He wants to teach you how to catch people for God. That thing that you are catching is not profitable. That thing you are doing that you are struggling is not it. There's something that he has for you. He has a job for you. He's about to transform your life and teach you how to catch people for God. Not to catch people for this company that you're not even happy with. You're not even doing well. You're struggling. You've been doing it for a while. Nothing to show for it.
God wants to use somebody. God wants somebody to work for him. God wants to train somebody. The laborers are few. The harvest is plenty. Somebody that has put in all they have into that thing that is not working. Somebody that put in all their time into that business, that thing that is not working. Somebody that stays all night, they can't sleep, stay up all night trying to make this business, this thing work and it's not working. Somebody that is not appreciated where they are. Somebody that is just tired and sick and tired of doing that thing, frustrated. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will transform your life and teach you how to catch people for God. I will teach you how to catch people for God. He cut them rikushka on the And they straightway left their nets and they followed him. Before he can teach you how to be fishers of men, you have to follow him. You cannot say you want to be a fisher of men and you're not following Jesus. You will not have direction. You will be lost. You will be confused. But if you follow him, he is the one that will teach you how to do it. He's the one that will lead you into that destiny. But you have to follow him. Some people don't want to follow Jesus, but they want all of this stuff. How is that going to work? He's the only one. He's the only one that knows what you're supposed to be in life. So if you don't want to follow, if you don't want to leave for him, you don't want to love him, it's impossible. There's no way I would have done all that I've done without the help of Jesus, without the help of the Holy Spirit. Because I, ha- you know what they call novice? I was a novice. I didn't know anything. All I knew was parties and all this worldly stuff. I don't even know anything about this thing. I was just in Bishop's Church for two weeks. And I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And I just started preaching the next day. So I was brand new. But I was following Jesus. And just obeyed what he was telling me to do. And I'm still following him till today. Even this fast that I'm doing is following him. I'm obeying what he wants me to do. You can tell from my voice that I'm tired. This is not how my voice sounds. I'm usually shouty, shout. I can't even shout because I'm just tired. I'm weak. All because I'm following him. And I'm bearing fruits. I'm bearing fruits. You are getting saved. I'm seeing some of your comments. You guys are excited that you completed the fasting and you are proud of yourself. What if I had disobeyed? What if I hadn't put it together? Would you be doing the fast? Some of you try to fast on your own and you can't even do it. But whenever I organize it like this, it makes it easy for you because you're encouraged because there are other people doing it with you. That's all part of me following Jesus. And obeying and letting him, letting him, letting him work through me, use me mightily. And he has changed my life. And I'm going back to see people that were doing well before. People that when I saw their, their life, I was like, God, I want to work hard so I can at least get to the place where this one is. And look at them now. I'm hearing that they are struggling. And look at me. Look at the money they were making that I was thinking was big money. That's money I spent to do programs. Can you imagine? Did I ever think I would see such money in my life? Sometimes I used to see these people's paychecks. And I would scream. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of money. But these days, the kind of money I spend doing programs. I never knew I would ever see kind of that kind of money in my life. And I just spend them freely doing these things. Jesus made this happen because I agreed to follow him. I agreed to work with him. I agreed to work for him. And look at my life now. People are seeing me now and saying, oh, woman of God, you are an inspiration. Woman of God, oh, thank God for you. You make me want to do more. You want, look, at, look at that. Look at that. And then the next scripture it took me to was Matthew 11. From verse 28 to 30. One of my favorite scriptures. It says come unto me. 
all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, come unto me, you that is, that is carrying a heavy burden, you that is tired, you that is tired of struggling. It said, come unto me, I will give you rest, meaning I will refresh your life. Come unto me, I will help you. I will help you. I will transform your life. You that is tired of doing that thing that is not making any sense. You that is tired of carrying that heavy load. You that is tired of of, of crying every night. You that is tired of stressing every time. You that is tired of being depressed. Come unto me. He said, come and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Another translation says, simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways and you will discover that I am gentle, humble, and easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. Verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The TPT translation say, For all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. Meaning I'm not going to request for too much from you. I'm not going to ask for something that is too hard for you to do. He said, For all that I will require of you will be pleasant and it will be easy to bear. It will not be too much for you. ERV said, Yes, the teaching that I ask you to accept is easy. The load that I give you to carry is light. Right now you are carrying a heavy load. Come and let me replace it with a lighter one. Come and let me give you rest. Come and let me refresh your life. Come and let me transform your life. Come and let me help you recover your life. Come and let me take you around the world. Come. Come. <laughs> Let me show you who you really are and what you can really do. Come. Let me open your eyes. Right now, what you're doing is not what you're supposed to be doing. That's what he probably told Peter. You are catching fish here, struggling all night. You can't even catch one single fish. Come. I have great plans for you. You wouldn't need to stay up all night trying to catch and nothing is coming. I have bigger job for you. I will make you fishers of men. The first time that Peter ever preached, if you read the book of Acts chapter 2, when they got filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, when Peter started to preach, his first time ever standing in front of the crowd to preach, do you know how many people, how many men he caught? How many people repented? When Peter preached that first time, there were thousands of people, thousands of people repented. His first try, his first time ever without Jesus. But there was a time he couldn't even catch any fish. There was a time he couldn't even catch any fish all night. But once he followed Jesus and he started doing what God wanted him to do the first time he preached 3,000 people repented if you read Acts chapter 2 from verse 41 then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls a man that could not catch any fish all night that twirled all night could not catch any fish was frustrated and was washing his empty net to go home sad to go home depressed the moment he followed Jesus he transformed his life and he was able to start to preach to people he was becoming useful and his first time preaching when he got filled with the Holy Ghost the Bible said 3,000 people 3,000 people repented and he didn't have to stress to get them. He had help. The Holy Spirit helped him.
before when he was trying to fish by himself it was all by himself he could not really figure out where to go put his net or whatever he was struggling he was trying to figure everything out on his own but the moment he started working for god the spirit of the Lord even put the right words in his mouth, gave him the right scriptures to quote, gave him the boldness that he needed to do the work. It is the spirit of God that touched the hearts of people and 3,000 people repented on his first night of preaching to them. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will train you Peter was with Jesus for a long time and all that time he was in training just like me I was in that closet for one year I was being trained I buried my head in the word I had a lot of encounter the same way he would train you Jesus is not too busy for anyone the Holy Spirit is not too busy for anyone the same Holy Spirit in me is the same Holy Spirit in you you can call upon him any time of the day and he will answer you. He will not say, oh, I am busy with Melamah right now. I will get back to you later when I'm done with Melamah. No, he's not going to say that. If I'm praying that I need him at 1, 1 a.m. and you need him at the same 1 a.m., he will be there for all of us at the same exact time. Our lives will begin to make sense meaningful lives and then after a while you go back and you see those people that were in the same place with you before i heard it clearly i heard he is struggling like he is struggling now and this is a guy that used to make a lot of money then now in three years i'm hearing that he's struggling because he's using human effort to do what he's doing not with the help of jesus and what he's doing does not benefit God in any way. So it's only a matter of time. And he will start to struggle and that's what is happening. Meanwhile, I'm here going higher and higher with the help of Jesus. Accomplishing things that I never dreamt of accomplishing. Going to places that I never thought of going to. All because I agreed to follow Jesus. I agreed for him to make me a fisher of men. I was just thanking God for choosing me, for picking me. And he told me, he said, tell them that there are so many of them that I want to work with too. That there are so many of them that I want to make fishers of men. There's a lot of work out there to do. It's just that people are not ready to be dedicated. They are not ready to be committed. They are not ready to be holy. They are not ready to totally surrender. They still have one foot here and one foot there. A lot of people, they are not ready to for that sacrifice. They are not ready to, to, to surrender all to him. There's still something that their mind is out there looking at. You know, they're just not ready. They're not ready. A small shaking and they give up. A small shaking. And they quit. A small shaking. And they regret everything. They stop. There's some of you. Things may not go the way you planned in the beginning. Oh God, if I tell you the beginning days, it sounds funny now, but it was not funny then. There were times that I was so frustrated. I'm preaching and preaching to people. And instead of the numbers to increase, it was going down. And then there was one particular night I couldn't sleep. I was on my bed and I, around like 11, 12 midnight. I was asking God, I said, how do I get more people to watch me? The people watching, they don't seem like they're even interested. They're just trying to see what I'm trying to say or whatever. But I don't think they're really feeling what I'm saying. At that night, it was God himself, the Holy Spirit, that led me to my fan page and taught me how to promote. I only had $20 in my account, but I was willing to let go of $10 to try the Facebook promo thing. And the next day, I had a lot of results. I started paying Facebook to promote my videos. 
Because I just needed new people to watch. I didn't just sit down and fold my hand and say, oh, well, God will send people. God will send people. No. The Spirit of God helped me. And even at that time, there were times my son would come from school and say, Mommy, they say I'm owing money in the cafeteria. I don't ha- I haven't paid. There was one particular day I was owing like $19 and some change. His normal day, day daily lunch is like two something. I didn't have the money for it. And I cried in the closet. I said, what kind of life is this? I'm just here preaching all day. I'm always here praying, reading Bible, and I can't even pick less than $20 for my son's lunch food in school. Like, what is this? I need to get a job. I want to work. I don't want to just be sitting here. These people, they don't even like what I'm doing. They don't even feel in my messages. What am I doing here? I cried that day in that closet, and all I could hear from God was, wait, wait. Wait. I'm like, what am I waiting for? I've been waiting. What am I waiting for? I even call Bishop. I say, why do I keep hearing? Wait, wait, wait. What am I waiting for? Waiting for what? I have a son. I got bills to pay. I can't just be sitting here. In America, who sits in the closet doing stuff like this? So it's not always easy in the beginning. But I kept on pushing. I kept on doing because see there was one day in the closet the devil was speaking loud and I could hear him he said you are such a fool who sits in the closet in America just preaching and reading bible fast and praying my friend go get a job you could get at least three to four thousand dollars in your first check and suddenly I saw a check with my name on it about three thousand dollars and some change it was so real and it made sense and he was saying you know if you had this kind of money you will be able to pay your bills you will pay this and pay that and you will have some money saved which made a lot of sense i carried my laptop and i went downstairs from the closet where i pray i went downstairs i was alone in the house and when i went downstairs i opened the laptop and I wanted to, I, I went to Google, I wanted to start looking for like job websites or something, you know, like I wanted to look for job sites, to look for job, because I have a degree in accounting, I went to school here, University of Houston downtown, I have experience, I've worked with the bank before, I, I've, I've had some good jobs before, so it's not like I'm lazy, I could apply for a job and get a job, so I don't understand why I should just be in the closet praying and preaching. The moment I opened the laptop, I was going to Google, I heard it clearly, it was a voice, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm trying to look for a job, he said, what job, you already work for me. I said, but I don't have any money. I need to pay bills. He said, close that laptop and go to Facebook. I started to cry. I took my phone and I went to news feed. And one of my friends on Facebook, her name is Hawele. She shared a video. He said, click on that video. And that video was a video of a lady in London. essay. She was preaching on the street of London. And I was watching that video and I was crying. He said, this is what you will do for me. And that street was so cold. She was just shouting, repent, 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 repent. Jesus is coming soon. Repent. And I was crying. I cried. I cried. I said, what is this? I'm tired. How is this going to pay my bills? How is this going to do this? I need money to pay my son stuff. I need money to pay my phone bill. And then I just got tired of watching the video. I went into the kitchen. I went to go make food to eat. I made some gari, like planet, gari fufu, the one we call gari, I call it fufu. And my mother had made okra soup. I scooped some okra soup out. And I was just eating and crying and eating. I was alone in the house because I was just fed up. I was just tired. I was just tired. So while I was eating, I heard the voice again. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm eating. He said, I'm not done with you yet. I said, what? He said, go back on Facebook. I went back on Facebook. He said, click on that girl's name. I clicked on her name. He said, go to her page. I went to her page. He said, scroll down. 
I kept strolling on her page. He said, keep scrolling. And I saw that she had gone to like India or Pakistan or somewhere where she was laying hands on people, you know, like healing people, praying for people. He said, this is your job. You don't get to get another job. This is the job that I have for you. Uh, 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 this is what you will be doing for me. You cannot look for another job. I started to cry. I said, how is this going to pay my bills? How is this going to pay my bills? Uh, I was just crying. And crying. I cried for hours. And when I came online, I did a video on Facebook. I continued the crying on Facebook. I, ca- I cried that day. On, I, I need to find that video. I was telling them what happened word for word the way I'm telling you right now. I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried in that video. In fact, when they saw me, because I used to cry a lot in my video, almost every day. When they saw me on that video, they already knew I've been crying all day. I was just narrating the story. I was crying. I said that time, eh? I didn't even have one dollar in my account. It was hard. But I just kept believing and obeying and doing it. And that's why when people see me now, they see me spending money, giving money, doing it. They have no idea. It was almost a year of nothing. Almost a year of God trying me, testing me to see. And before you know it, the door started to open. Finances, everything started coming in. But it didn't just come in the first few months that I did it. No. I didn't even ask anyone for offering till like I started preaching in August of 2016. Was it not like around maybe eight months later or seven months that I started asking for offering? And nobody was giving offering because I didn't even have PayPal. I didn't have cash up. Where were you going to give offering from? I don't have none of those stuff. I would just come preach, tell you, God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you again next time. Nothing. Nothing. But God will keep promising me, I will make you one of the richest people in the world. And when I give you this money, make sure you use it to make impact. Let money not be a reason why you don't do what I'm telling you to do. Remember, you will not come back with a dime. It will be telling me all these things. I will be hearing it. I'm like, so how? How? I will keep asking. I say, how? How? It will just tell me, wait, wait, wait. I told Bishop, Bishop, say, if God is telling you, wait, then you wait. I say, wait for what? What am I waiting for? He say, just wait. If he says wait, you wait. <sighs> it was frustrating. At that point, I believe even if I had gotten a job, I would probably not be comfortable there. They probably would have fired me. Or I probably would not even like working there. Or I probably would never even get the job. But it paid off. And everything just took a different turn. Even at that time that I was waiting, that things were hard, I had to put my car on Craigslist. You guys know Craigslist? I had no money. I listed my car on Craigslist to sell it. Because my car was a little new. I said, well, if I sell it for this amount, I can buy a cheaper car and I can use the remaining to pay bills. Do you know I put that car on Craigslist. And less than how many weeks later. Or a few days later. Bishop was doing a training in church. And I was one of the people that joined the training. Me and my mother. At the end of the training. Bishop said five of you here. God wants you to give a painful sacrifice. And then he will take you to another level in your ministry. And he pointed me. I was among the five. He told us to go stay, st- um, go to the altar and pray that God will reveal to us what He wants us to give. I don't have anything else at that point. I couldn't even pay for my storage. My storage got taken from me. They they they, they took everything in my storage and they sold it out or auctioned it. This is storage of me living alone for over ten years. Everything I had was gone because I couldn't pay one hundred and thirty dollars to save my storage. So I lost everything. The only thing I had left was the car, and it was currently on Craigslist for sale. Actually, people have been coming to check the car out. 
one Asian guy had even come driven it around. Another guy had come. I was hoping that I would sell this car and buy one cheap car and use that extra four or five thousand or whatever thousand I get to do some things. But when I went on that altar, when Bishop told us to go on that altar, all I heard was your car. I keep hearing your car, your car. If it's you, how would you feel? Car that you've already put on Craigslist because you need that money so bad. And now you're hearing that you need to give this car. And it's not Bishop that told me. It was God himself. I heard it on my own. I was not told. I, I heard it. Because sometimes people will say, oh, they are trying to manipulate you. No, nobody told me this. I heard it myself. So Bishop took us to the, his office one by one, asking us, what did, what did we hear? I told him, I said, me, I'm hearing my car. And because he knew that I was suffering then, he felt bad for me. He said, are you sure you want to give your car? I said, yes, that's what I heard. He said, okay, you know what? Go and sleep over it. And call me tomorrow. Think about it. Because he was feeling sorry for me. Because there were some times when I come to church. It is him that I will, I will collect $10 or $20 from, his, from him. Or something. So he knows that that car I needed to sell it. To give you use the money. So when he heard it. He, his face even changed. He felt sorry for me. But it's just, I just had to do what I had to do. When I came home. I went to sleep. I even dreamt of giving the car away. So I called him when I woke up. I said, it's still my car that I'm hearing. He said, okay, are you sure you want to give it? I said, yes, sir. I just went on Craigslist. I went to remove it from Craigslist listing. I don't know if you can go on Craigslist and see old listings. I removed it from Craigslist. I just deleted the post from Craigslist. And my mother was there. I took the car and the car keys. I took it to church that Sunday. And I left it in church. And I didn't even look back. I didn't even look back. And when I came back, I did a fasting for one week. And while I was doing that fast, I think it was on day five or day six, I had a dream. A lady in white came and she gave me money. She put money in my head. And when she was walking away, after giving me the money, my eyes opened from the sleep. And the lady transformed to a big angel. It was her back. She transformed to a very big angel. And I was opening my eyes. I saw it in the room where I prayed. And it looked so big. Bigger than my closet. Wider than my closet. Longer than my closet. But I saw him slide and enter into my closet. And God told me that that's the angel of wealth that I have received. And then he told me. He said somebody will give you a car. And I wrote it in my memo. I wrote somebody will give me a brand a, 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 a jeep or new car or new jeep or something and an angel of wealth like meaning money is coming this was in 2000 and what was it 16 or 17 my dear do you know I was thinking I will get a car ASAP because I already gave my car and I was driving my sister's car that was leaking oil, tire was bad, no sticker, no insurance. It's an old car. She bought a new car, so she just parked the car somewhere. Everything was wrong with that car. But I just needed a car to take Michael to school that was just four or five minutes away from the house. But I had to always pump air into the tire. I had to put oil. It was just a bad car. So when I got that revelation i was happy i was thinking somebody was bringing a car for me do you know i never got this car that god promised me until last year 2018 almost two years later and it was bishop himself that bought me a car one day i was just in the house and he said are you home i say yes he said okay i'm in front of your house he said come out i came outside and he gave me key i said what is this he says it's your car god told me to buy you this car I said, what? I said, you're kidding me. He said, yes. I said, okay, hold on. I opened my phone. I looked for where the memo is, where I wrote it. And I said, please, sir, can you read this? And he read it. He said, Wait, when did you write that? I said, that was that time I gave that car. God told me somebody would give me a car. I didn't even know it would be you. And I didn't know it would be long ago. I almost forgot about it. 
because now I had money to buy a car. But anytime I want to go buy a car, ask my mom. Anytime I want to go buy a car, something will make me, I will be lazy. I won't do it. Anytime I tell my mother or my father, I want to go buy a car. I can afford to get a car now. Something will make me, I will not go. Suddenly I will be so, like I will be so weak or something. I won't go, not knowing that God wanted to fulfill his promise in my life before I could buy my own. Bishop brought a car to my house. The one that I'm driving till today. He said he didn't know that, that God just told him to give me one. The one that he gave me is even way better than the one I gave to God. I was like, wow, this is amazing. So when he promised me that, I was thinking it was going to come that same week or around that time. You know, sometimes like just like when God promised Abraham a child, he probably thought it would be like a few months from now. But it took 25 years for that boy to come. Mine took two years. But in those two years, God provided a car for me to drive to take my son to school. And because I didn't go out much, it didn't really make any difference for me to get a car because I don't really go anywhere. I was always home. But it took two years for the promise to come. Like for the promise to come, it took two years. And now I can buy a car. I can buy any car that I want. But even the one that I have, how many times do I drive it? I don't think I've driven that car in months. The last time I entered it, it was Janelle that drove me to the studio where Sue was in it, Andrea was in it. Most times, Mavis will come and pick me up. He doesn't even want me driving anywhere. Even my father doesn't want me driving. He said, I, do. I don't even drive. My mother is the one always driving the car, going everywhere with it. I don't even drive. When Pastor Isaac was here, he's the one that drives it and takes my son to school and does stuff. But that was a time that I gave it up. After I listed it on Craigslist. But God still sustained me. Even when I gave the car. For some reason I always had my phone on. No day did they disconnect my phone. I always had. I don't even know how. But things were taken care of. So the first few months. The first year was not easy. It was hard. But I was consistent. I did not say, oh, I give up. I'm tired. I want to go do something else. I stayed. I tried to give up. And then God will speak to me. And then I will cry, cry, cry before, you know, I'm preaching. But what if I had given up totally? I would not be here. And that's what is wrong with a lot of people. They're not able to stay till the end. They give up quickly. And before you know it, they go back to square one. Before you know it, their life is even worse than it was before. But I didn't give up. And I'm still not giving up. I'm still here. I'm still going strong. Working with Jesus. Following Jesus. And people will see you. They don't even know your story. And they will be talking nonsense. I just pray for these people that God will have mercy on them. Don't just talk about things you don't even know. Don't just see people and say, oh, she has it like this because it's like that. You have no idea what you're talking about. Don't fight people that you don't even know what they've been through. You don't know their agreement with God. You don't know the connection with God. You don't know the sacrifices that they've made. You have no idea. God will test you. God will test you. I think I was seeing Bishop had a video talking about valley experience or so. Yeah, you're going to be through that. You're going to go through that. Some people can't go through that. They quit during that period. They can't take the heat. It's too much and they quit. And one thing I noticed with God is I was living alone since 2000 and what? I lived alone for over 10 years. It was while I was married and then all of a sudden when me and my ex-husband were no longer together, I was so broke. I couldn't afford anything. That's when I ran into my parents' house with my son. I moved there. But all those things was part of God's plan because God put me in my parents' house while I was doing his work. See, God placed some of you in a place where right now you are not really paying so much bills. Or maybe you're not even paying any bills except for your phone bill or something. You are probably staying with a friend or with family right now. 
God knows what he's doing. Don't you understand? You are probably in a place where you feel uncomfortable or something. But this is the time that God wants you to start to to get to know him more. Because now you don't have to worry about all the bills of the house. If I was living alone with my son, I don't think I would have been able to do this because I would have needed to get a job to pay for rent and pay for all this. But I was in my family's house. So my parents were worried about the rent, the light bill and all that. I was just worried about my phone and my son's um, stuff and some of my little, little stuff. But the house where I was staying, it was paid for. The electricity was paid for. It was just little things. So even me moving there thinking I was a failure, right? I was saying, oh, like, look at me. I'm the first child of the family and I'm in my family house. What kind of example am I teaching my younger ones? I can't even help them with bills. All that was part of God's plan. All that was part of God's plan. I was in a place where I didn't have to worry about rent. They were not bothering me. Oh, you are staying here too much. They were not bothering me. Oh, you need to be buying this, paying this. Nobody was bothering me. So God placed me in a place where I didn't have to worry about those major bills. So I could be able to stay in the closet for one year. So somebody, if you're checking your life right now, you're thinking you're a failure. You are thinking you have been brought back to a grade one or zone one or brought back to nothing. And now you are staying with somebody or family or something. This is the time. This is the time. I say, this is the time for you to hold on tight to God and do what he's telling you to do. Because you are in training right now. God is using this opportunity to train you and get you ready. He said there are people here that he wants to make fishers of men. There's somebody here that he wants to use you. There's somebody here that will be great. He wants them to follow him, to hold on tight to him, no matter the situation. No matter the shaking, no matter the sacrifice that you have to give. There are some of you, God will tell you, give this. Like when God told me to give my car, I didn't need to discuss it with anyone. My mother was there. I didn't need my mother's opinion to give it. I'm a grown up woman. I know what I hear. I didn't say, mommy, do you think I should give this card? No, I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't need to ask my mom. We were actually in the service together. We were in that service together. You know, we were in the service together. She was there in the service when I gave the car over with the key and everything. But I did not need our opinion to do it. Because this was between me and God. Do you know God sees everything? He knows what we're doing. He sees everything. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're planning. He searches your heart. He knows if you gave this willingly. Or if you gave it grudgingly. I was not grudging at all. I was happy to give it. I just went on Craigslist and I deleted the 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 um the ad or or the the listing so that nobody will be calling me to buy it again because I don't have it anymore. I've given it. That was a big test because that's the only thing I had. So God was checking to see if I'm willing to give the only thing I had that I really needed at that time, and I willingly gave it. So tell me why he is not going to bless me. He has seen that I don't I don't take anything too 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 close to myself, to heart or something. I'm willing to give up anything for him. And look at my life now. Tomorrow I'll be turning 39. And at 39 years old, 
I'm known all over the world because I'm a woman of God. At 39 years old, a lot of people call me mommy. A lot of people, have, their lives have changed because of what Jesus has been using me to do. I can go anywhere and be treated like a princess. Look at me. Even when I stay up all night, like I've been here all night, meditating, worshiping, crying, praying. I'm not staying up all night because I'm stressed. I'm staying up all night because I just want to spend time with God. Before I'm staying up all night stressed, thinking of how I can make money, how I can do this. But that's not what I think of right now. I don't need to think of stuff like that anymore. Instead, I just spend time with him, enjoying his presence. He has changed everything. He speaks to me all the time. He shows me dreams. He shows me visions. He helps me all the time. Look at what happened in Liberia. Look at what happened in Liberia. That was a big test for me. Because I risked my life. Despite all the threats. All the negativity that they are still doing up till now. I went to a country that I've never been to before just went and I did this program successfully and he brought me back safely. There are some people that would have said they are not going. You know what? Forget it. I'm not coming. Maybe next year I will come or maybe when, next time when this thing died down. But I went. I still went. I still went. I still went. And God moved mightily. Mm. I just want to encourage somebody here. God is probably taking you through a process right now. A phase right now. Don't give up. Hold on tight to Jesus. Listen to his voice. Obey him. This is between you and him. Don't let anybody discourage you. Don't let anybody tell you what to do. It's between you and Jesus. Many are called. Many are called. Many are called. Many are called. But few are chosen. Don't you want to be among the few that will be chosen? If nothing is working in your life, Every business, every job you do, you're not working. It's not working. You're not succeeding. It means you're not supposed to work in those places. It means you're supposed to work for God. There are some of you on here. You always get fired or you don't have interest in doing anything. Every time you try to do anything, it doesn't work. It's a sign that you're supposed to work for God. You're supposed to be working for God. I'm telling you, you have all these skills, you have all these potentials, but nothing you do works. You're always struggling. You know, like with everything you have, you should be on the top, but you're not on the top. It's a sign that you're supposed to be working for God. I'm telling you, there are some of you here as I'm speaking, you're like, it's me, it's true. You have so many degrees, you have so many things. Like you have so many skills, you know so many things, but nothing works. Even job, you can't stay in job. You get, you lose interest quickly. It means you are not meant to be there. Like you're supposed to work for God. This is me. I'm telling you, I went through this. I am so smart. My, my mom is listening to this audio right now. I'm one of the smartest people I know in this world. I am very smart. Even here in America, when I started going to school here, especially in my English class, all the papers I wrote, the professors, they refused to give it to me. They were begging me to keep it. I used to get perfect scores. And then I was always going to party and everything, but I will always get a hundred or more. Like I was very smart and I don't make so much effort. I just, I was just smart like that. I was just very good at so many things, but nothing. I don't get anywhere with it. But look at what I'm doing now. Everything is making sense. That's why nothing worked for me because this is what I'm supposed to be doing. 
So there's a lot of you here listening that God connected to me. It's because God wants to use you. And this three days fasting that you are doing is for your eyes to open. For you to be used greatly by God. All those skills that you've acquired, all those talents, all those gifts that you have is for the kingdom. It's for the work of God. Follow him and he will make you fishers of men. He says, follow me, follow me. Meaning, don't be distracted. Don't take your eyes off of him. Don't follow anyone else but him. Because the moment you remove your eyes from him, you will be lost. The moment you follow somebody else, you will be lost. So your eyes have to be be on him. You have to follow him closely for you to become that fisher of men. For you to be that person that he wants you to be. It has to be all about Jesus. Everything you do should be all about Jesus. Jesus should be the focus. I'm telling you, the moment you lose sight of Jesus, you lost it all. I want you guys to put your right hand on your forehead. I want to pray for you. I want God to reveal something to you. All of you here. I want him to reveal. Because we are fasting. And I know that right now the flesh is weak. And your spirit man is so sensitive right now. I want God to reveal what you are supposed to do for him. So that you will know that, yes, you are on the right track. I want him to tell you something that you didn't know before about yourself. I just want him to open your eyes to seeing who you really are. So you stop moving in circles. Put your right hand on your forehead. Father. I have given this message that you gave me. You told me that they should follow you and you will make them fishers of men. You told me that they should come to you with the heavy load and everything and that you will remove it from them. And you will give them rest. You will walk with them. You will use them mightily the way you are using me. Father, please reveal to them who they are. What they are supposed to be doing. Either in a vision or in a dream. I don't care how you do it. But reveal to them. Show them who they are. And help them get to that place. In the name of Jesus. Let this fast not be in vain Lord. Equip them the way you equip me. Help them the way you are helping me. In the name of Jesus. Empower them Lord. In the name of Jesus, let this be the last day that they will ever be confused about what they're supposed to be doing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. A lot of you will have some kind of revelation. It will be mostly in dreams. Some of you to be like in a flash. As I have prayed this prayer, it's like something has happened to your dream life. Some of you that your dreams were blocked so you don't know who you are. It's already done now. It's You are free from that blockage. You are free. Suddenly, some of you will dream dreams. You will be seeing yourself praying for people in front of a crowd. Some of you will even see, I, I see this dream clearly. Somebody, you're going to have a dream. And Jesus himself will give you an assignment to go and do something. He will give you an assignment. Go tell the world. Tell them to repent. Tell them I am coming soon. You will have that dream from now to the next three days. You will have that dream. And it will be so clear. You will remember it. He will even give you a scripture. I think somewhere in Matthew. He will tell you to go and use that scripture to preach. Tell them that he's coming soon. A lot of you will have some specific dreams. Some of you, you will see a dream where you are helping people. I see a lot of kids. You are helping children. I see somebody. I see you like you are like a 
like a servant. You're serving. You're like working with a man of God. You're working with a servant of God. Like um, it's PA or what? The, like something that Wesu does for me. You know, like somebody close to a servant of God that is very busy. And that's what you're supposed to do. That's your job. See, not everybody will will preach. Some people might be assistant pastors. Some people might just help a pastor. Some people might be prophetess. Some people might be prophets. Some people might be evangelists. Some people might just be financing the kingdom of God. Some people might be, um, what's it called? Um, what's the name of this thing where they travel from country to country? Um, and they help, they build like things in those countries or they, oh, this is what I'm looking for. I forgot it, but everybody is different, but God will show you clearly. You will have a dream from now till the next three days. I see it clearly. I hear it clearly where you will, in fact, you would need to write it down. And from that dream, you will begin to understand what God wants you to do. Some of you, your dream life was tampered with. You either don't remember your dream or you've been having stupid dreams that don't make sense. I say you are free right now because the dreams that you will have right now will be God himself showing you things that you need to know. Because some of you on here, I hear clearly, you have been praying for direction. You have been praying for God to direct you. But now you have received it. Don't worry. You will come back with testimony. You will see it so clear. It will be like a movie. You will not forget any part of it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And from today, may God begin to speak to you clearly. In the name of Jesus. I don't want you to be guessing that, oh, I think God said that. I think he said that. No, no, no. I know that God is telling me to do this. God told me to do this. I want you to hear clearly. To know for a fact that this is God speaking to you. Receive that gift of discernment in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. I feel so good right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God. <laughs> we only have two more prayer lines and we are done. How is everyone feeling right now? Sorry, I've been crying a lot today, man. <laughs> How are you feeling? I hope you've been blessed. Oh, Jesus. Have you been blessed? If you've been blessed, type, I have been blessed. I have been blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God is raising an end time army. People that will be fearless and brutal. People that will, that will, that will go there and, and do whatever God tells them to do, that they are willing to obey. People that are not easily moved or shaken by the enemy, you know, like he's building, he's raising an end time army that will be, that will be empowered by him. They will have this, you know, they, 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 will, they will work in the supernatural, not just talking, 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 as in power, the raw power of God, I'm telling you. And you will be one of them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, I want to bless water for you guys today. Oh God, I need to go get one bottle of water. I want to bless water. Get your water. Let me go get mine too. Get water. Thank you, Jesus.
Okay, I'm ready. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm ready. If you're ready, I have to go grab one. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. I want to bless your water. I have mine too. Just open it. Raise it up. Father, I command. Uh, I command everybody's water, including mine, to turn into the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I anoint it in the name of God the Fire, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was just praying, I heard fire. And if you notice, I say God the fire instead of God the Father. I command your water to turn into fire right now. In the name of Jesus, even as you are holding it, you will begin to feel fire coming out of your water. Your hand will be hot right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. This is no longer ordinary water. It has turned to fire. And as you drink this water, it will melt away everything that needs to be melted out of your system. And you will be on fire for God. As you sprinkle this water, it will turn to fire that will chase every evil out of your house. As you use it on yourself, whatever needs to come out of your, your body, the fire will chase it out. In the name of Jesus. Anointed in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Drink it and begin to be on fire for God in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was just blessing the water, I just heard fire fire even as i'm talking now my old hand is hot my bottle is hot some of you right now once you drink this water you will start to feel fire all over your body some of you will feel it on your back my god some of you will feel it on your back some of you will feel it on your legs your hand oh my god Oh my God. It's like fire. You will just begin to be hot. Somebody, you're, you're going to turn on your fan. Some of you, you, you want to take off your shirt. It's like fire. I heard it. Fire. Fire. It's, this water is turned to fire. It will put some of you on fire. You will pray. And today you will pray so much. When I was getting the water, I heard God tell me, to tell you guys that we'll break this fast at 12 o'clock. So when we come back on the next one, that's going to be the last prayer line for the fasting. I heard 12 o'clock. So we only have one more to go. So once we come back in the next, um, in the next, um, in the next five hours, the fast will be over. I was saying 6 o'clock, but when I went to go get the water, I heard 12. So at 12 o'clock, just wait till the next five hours. You've come this far. You can do this. We'll break it. as. Uh, uh, 12 p.m. today. 12 p.m. So right now it's 7 a.m. 7 um. 7 20 a.m in houston so 12 will be like four something hours from now we should be breaking it by then ah jesus christ i feel fire all over my body my leg my hand my eyes is like fire is coming out of my eyes and then suddenly i'm yawning <sighs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Ah, this water, yeah. Do you know, whenever I bless water for you guys, I also take one. <laughs> I don't let this water pass me by you because this water is very, very powerful. <laughs> this water is very, very powerful. So when I went to go get the water, one of the things that God told me was that there are some people that have been watching my videos 
for some time and he has transformed their life, right? He has made them useful. And then he reminded me of a lady that sent me a testimony, like a testimony, like a few weeks ago, but I cannot remember her name. So while I was getting the water and God was speaking to me, I was like, how can I find the message? Because I can't remember her name. And guess how powerful my father is. The moment I came back to the video with my water, guess who commented? The lady that I'm about to read the message she sent me. She said, I am one, I am one of the end time army or something. A comment was right there in my face. Her name is um Yvonne. Yvonne something. So I saw it and I went to go type her name on Messenger. <laughs> As I just came back to my phone, she commented, I am one of the end time, um, cause I say God is raising an end time army. I was just like, wow, father, you really want me to read her message. So I'm going to read the message she sent me on September 4th. God bless all of you. My God, my instrumental for my song is playing. to read the message and this instrument oh my god this thing does something to me my god <laughs> that's the song that the angels taught me this is minister philip minister philip will be here on sunday tomorrow um <laughs> for my birthday so we're gonna have a great time it will be powerful i actually miss minister philip in liberia my god the keyboard is those two guys they did very well but you know, it's always good to carry your own keyboardist because he understands you and everything. So I'm going to read Yvonne's message that she sent. This, this thing is not letting me focus. Let me pause it. I'm just in the spirit today, man. I'm going to read Yvonne's message. She said, hello, woman of God. And she's on here. She's listening. She's on the audio too. She said, hello, woman of God. Thank God for your life. My story, my story with my Lord Jesus Christ will be incomplete without you. Thank you for bringing me back to my father. I was far from him at a point in my life, living my own way until I came across your videos, your preaching, teaching, prayers, deliverance, and, and videos have made make a, made a new person made me a new person in Christ in Jesus Christ now i am back to my father god loving him and living for him all i desire in my life is to love and please god more i am grateful mama grace i thank god for using you to make me a changed person and a better person i am now useful Thank you, Jesus. I started leading praise and worship in church. And I was ordained as the head intercessor. Are you guys listening? He said, yes, I'm here, mama. God bless you, my darling. God was telling me to read your message and I couldn't get your name. But once I came back to the phone, I saw you comment. I am one of the end time army. I was like, wow, father is so powerful. I'm still reading it. So I'm not done. She said, I, I started read, leading she said, I started leading praise and worship in church and I was ordained as the head intercessor and head of prayer warriors in my church on Sunday. All because you answered the call of God. More grace, woman of God. I love you. So when I went to get the water, God was telling me to read her message. 
of how he has made her useful. You know, I was just talking about how God wants to make you fishers of men. He wants to make you useful. And when he was telling me that, I was like, oh my God, I don't remember her name. Because I have so many of you. And the moment I picked my phone up, when I got my bottle of water, I saw her name right there. Yvonne. Saying, I am one of the enter. I was so happy. I said, wow, look at this. From nowhere, I didn't even know she was fasting with us. I'm, I think I'm going to post it. I'm going to post this, her testimony, to encourage somebody. Hallelujah. Uh, I didn't even know she sent another testimony. Wow, are you serious? She sent a testimony two days ago on Wednesday. I didn't know that you sent me a testimony. So many messages. She said, good morning, woman of God. This same lady, I'm just looking at the current message she sent. Good morning, woman of God. I thank God so much for your life. Doing the three days dry fasting we did. This was like the last one we did. You pray for us for a lot of things. One of them was the green card. Glory to God in the highest. I just got my green card last week. Thanks for all you do for us. God bless you. I love you, my beautiful, great woman of God. I just saw this testimony now. See, some of you have sent testimony that I've not even seen them. Wow, thank you, Jesus. I, I think I should post her, her message to encourage somebody. Somebody that wants to be useful for God. So you can see how lives are changing. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It was God himself that told me to read your message. And it's God that made you make that comment because I couldn't remember your name. And she says she's on here. She identified herself. I remember when this lady started watching the videos, actually. But now she's a prayer warrior, prayer intercessor, everything in church, praise and worship leader. She's useful in church now. <laughs> she would have just been there wasting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it right now so you guys can... Read it and be encouraged by it. If God can use her, God can use you too. Thank you, Jesus. And there's so much more. You know, there's so much more. There are many more. I'm, I'm typing and talking. That's why God made her useful. Okay, I just posted it. It's on my page now. You guys can read it after the... The, the prayer line is over. I posted your your thing, Yvonne. God bless you. I see a lot of people now preaching. Some of them have been ordained in their church. Some of them are doing other things. Like it's just, I just see people's lives changing. They're not just listening to the messages and going to sleep with it. They are running with it. They're, they're like, God is talking to me. You need to know when God is talking to you. Some of you, you probably came on here by accident, but the moment you came, I was talking about how God wants to make you useful or something or how God wants to use you. And maybe you've been hearing that lately. That was God speaking to you directly. So when God is speaking to you, you need to know what he wants you to do. Run with it. Run with it. Don't just say, well, it's one of those messages you know, it's one of those messages. She always talk this. She's always, my dear, it's not for you to run, to go and sleep with it. It's for you to run with it. I pray that the same way he has made this lady useful, he will make all of you useful in the name of Jesus. I'm going to let you guys go since we're going to come back at 12 to break the fast. I know some of you don't go and eat spiritually. Or don't go and picture food in your head and be eating. That means you have already broken your fast. Remember what Bishop was preaching the other day saying, if you're already thinking of yourself eating, <laughs> it means you've already broken the fast. Don't be like that. God bless all of you. Make sure you give your offering for the fast. I told you guys I opened an account in Liberia for those that live in Liberia. I'm going to post the payment info again the moment the video the audio ends god bless all of you i love you i'll see you again okay bye bye